Most people come to Tokyo in the spring or summer, not this video. We're here when it's rainy, cold, the flights are cheap, and the views are good. Most people would eat at famous ramen shops while they're here, nah. We're eating tasty sashimi from a mysterious man in a dark alleyway. Most people take fancy bullet trains to get around instead, but how about we take a water spaceship to go and eat a whole fish on a stick at a J-pop concert in the ring? That's exactly what this video is all about. This is the first of our three more days in series, and we're doing everything different this time around. We've even got a bit more budget to work with, $150 per day, but don't worry, we're not getting all bougie on you, it's just for this series. First stop, the brand new Team Labs Borderless. Oh, I can't wait for this. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. I booked this as soon as they opened, like the day that they opened, a couple of weeks ago. I'm ready. They've thought of everything. So many things to look at and so many things to smell. It's so fragrant. It smells like real flowers in here. We left one room to head into a different room and we kind of expected it to feel different and smell different, but the entire artwork just followed us from one place to the other. It was such a trip. And then I got to go down this cool slide. There is another one in town, Team Labs Planets, but they are fully different experiences. In fact, the only consistent between the two is that you feel like you're teleported to an entirely different planet from the moment you step in. I honestly thought that we had seen everything. Like once we saw one team lab, we saw all of them. And this just totally proves me wrong. This is so incredible. I'm like drinking their Kool-Aid. <laughs> This place feels endless, truly borderless. We went to like 10, maybe 20 different rooms already and there's still more. Like this room that felt straight out of a Doctor Strange movie. And this one that felt like we were kind of under the sea with SpongeBob SquarePants. And by kids, Lisa means literally everyone else here, including a bunch of adults and us. <laughs> and now we wait. Where is our little fishy? <laughs> Where is he? Wow, that sure is something. It's little fin is going and the flag is going. I love it. Hi, you weird little fish. There it goes. <laughs> that was one of the coolest things I've seen ever. I ever. I mean, I don't... How are they going to top that? A room filled with smoke? But we don't want to give it all away. That way you'll have some surprises when you come and see and smell this place for yourself. What'd you think? I really didn't want to leave. We were there for like two hours. I just like, I was so immersed, I felt like I was just transported to another world that I forgot that we didn't even eat breakfast. So, ramen? Hmm? They're cherry blossoms already. It's so pretty. been to this area before. We're in the Azubudai, Azubudai Hills area. It's right next to Rapungi and it is so cool and beautiful. Like the architecture is so awesome. And then there's all these beautiful cherry blossom trees. We're here in February so it's like right at the start of the season. It's so peaceful and pretty. Look 
asking me, I'm walking this way, this way, to the ramen. This place looks good. Ramen? Score! We can even order from a vending machine. You know, it might seem a bit impersonal, but these restaurants that have vending machines to order are a total lifesaver, and we love them. They almost always have the prices listed, sometimes there's English for those of us that didn't study hard enough in our foreign language classes like me. And even if there isn't, the pictures of the food are always super helpful and really tasty looking. We just walked by this place and ramen smells good. And I got an apron. Tasty. Time to go climb the tower. Okay, so we are at the Tokyo Tower, which we've seen tons of times before in the skyline, but we never thought to go up the thing. Apparently, you can take the elevator, or even better, you can walk up there. Now, if you've seen our channel and you've watched our channel for any amount of time, you know that we love walking. Now, you would think that the price would be cheaper. It's not, but you do get a fancy certificate. And we love fancy certificates. The thing I've been most proud of, maybe in my life. Now, before we get started, I just want to say this climb was awesome and totally worth it, but we do have one very important piece of advice. You know, probably don't eat a gigantic bowl of ramen right before doing this. So we got tickets to the main deck, uh, which is 1200 per person, and then the tickets all the way up to the very top of the elevator is 3000 per person. Uh, I have no idea if either of those worth it. We just really wanted to get our very official certificate of ascending stairs that we were going to have once we maybe make it to the top. Here you go. So cool. Here we go. Something. You can't really know. This is just a bunch of climbing stairs and we're not gonna subject you to our heavy breathing as we make our way to the top. So let's just fast forward to <gasps> That's not Fuji, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I didn't think that we would actually that's amazing! Oh my gosh! That is so cool! You know, I think if we were a different kind of YouTuber, we'd put like super dramatized music like this over the top. And really ham it up about how hard these stairs were and like it was some big deal to make it to the top. But in reality, it only took like 15 minutes and it wasn't that bad and that's not who we are. <laughs> But when you do get to the top, a hero party. I can't believe we can see it. It's so clear. I think only in winter would this be possible. You don't see that far. Oh, wow. Look at this view. Started all the way down here and then we ch -ch 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 all the way up to this deck, which is where we are right now. And then if you want, you can take another elevator all the way up to the top deck here for an extra like 1800 yen. But honestly, the view from up here, where do you really want? We're gonna climb that thing someday. Three days climbing Mount Fujisan on a budget. 
I don't think it takes three days. I know. I hope it doesn't take three days. We do cool days. stuff around. Yeah. You know. What? Oh boy. Well, you don't trust it. And just like that, the clouds are rolling in and Fuji Sun is getting shrouded. <laughs> okay, so ultimately the certificate of a stairway ascent was this tiny little card here. I'd seen online that it was like this big paper thing, but you know, it's like, uh, it's a for a fun achievement anyway, but I love pointless certificates. It makes me feel accomplished and helpful and useful. And like, I really did something. My life is now complete. Let's go get a croissant. Down we go to Foot Town. Blah, 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 more stairs. Let's move on. Back down. Oddly, the way down was way easier than the way up. Just looking up where to get a snack around here to, you know, we got to obviously undo all the good we just did for our bodies by walking up all those steps. So I found this bakery just down the road and Yumi Lita says, this is the best croissant I've ever had in my life. And I promise you that this is the best croissant you will ever have in your life. It's a big promise. We got to test this. Okay, Yumi, we're counting on you. <laughs> Ooh, there they are. That one. Gorgeous. Do you want a Japanese one too? Yeah, 100% definitely. Yeah, I want to try it. The secret of deliciousness is flame technology. That's true. They even have toasters here that are set to the optimum temperature and time. They really thought of everything. Got our back here. Look at this thing. <laughs> yes. That is extremely good. Not the best croissant I've ever had in my life, but definitely top five. Easy top five. And for the price? Like, yeah. This is a Japanese croissant. She might be onto something. She might have been right. I think she might be right. The Japanese croissant. I don't know what the best croissant of my life tastes like, but this is pretty freaking good. Pretty freaking good. Wow, what an in-depth and insightful review from our resident food critic, Lisa. She really, really likes being on camera in public places and eating food on camera. It's her favorite part of the job. So we walk down the street to Zoujouji. Temple to cool down. Then we heard some music playing in the background, and if there's one thing we've learned on all of our travels, it's that you should always follow the music. Wow, what an experience. They even left this temple to head outside and head to a different temple next door. Try as we might, we could not figure out what this thing was all about. And if anybody out there knows, please let us know. But we're sure glad that we caught it. Yeah, it goes from quiet to loud pretty fast. Such a cool place, this area. But we have a boat to catch. Gotta go. 
We love taking the trains and all the different kinds of transportation here, but at one point we looked at the map and we realized Tokyo's a port city. It's on the water and we've never been on the water here. So I just quick did a Google search and it turns out there's a water taxi system here and they look like spaceships. We are making our way back to Asakusa where our hotel is. I'm so excited. I mean, every form of transportation is super cool here, but these ones look extra special. <laughs> This is so cool. Apparently the designer of the ship was a manga artist. Uh, this, <laughs> this is so cool. We're moving kind of fast, which I think makes sense for like the submarine shape of this thing. Tokyo is beautiful by water. I don't think I've ever seen it like this. This is obviously a little bit more expensive than taking the train or a bus or something like that, but we're definitely traveling in style this way, and I think this is right in line with exactly what we're doing with this video since we got $150 per day. Is to just see like little extra cool things you can add on top of like a normal trip to Tokyo. This is definitely much more comfortable and way prettier than riding the subway. That reminds me, boat tour. So everybody sits in this space. There's no reserved seating. It's first come, first serve. There's windows on the side and above in this like spaceship like window thing. And there's a fancy bar at the back with very reasonably priced drinks. The bathroom is spotlessly clean and has a bidet, of course. And even though we saw people riding on the top deck on the way in, for some reason, on this route that we're on, you can't. The ride was a pleasant, balmy 40 minutes total until we saw our first signs of a Sakusa. Thank you. Ooh, fresh air. Oh, it was hot in there. I couldn't imagine riding that thing in summer. It's so crazy looking. <laughs> Yay, we made it to Asakusa. Overall, I thought the ride was unique and pretty cool. The spaceship boat itself was really awesome. You know, there's no assigned seating and we were kind of in the middle. It made it so that it was kind of challenging to see things. I think it would have been even better if we could have gone up to the top deck but for some reason I don't know if it's route or weather or because the bridges actually it's probably because the bridges are super duper low they took down the railing so we couldn't go up top that being said it's cool to see maybe cooler from the outside than on the inside my spaceship We've just got a quick check into our hotel before we head back out. Just a sec. This is it! Let's see what the view is like. Oh. Yep. Wait, no. Oh. There it is. Okay, let's go. Asakusa, we're back. First things first. <laughs> oh yeah, we got the melon pond. I mean, some things are worth going back for a second, third, fifth, seventh, a hundredth time. So we're back in Asakusa where, I mean, we kind of always say, we just love this neighborhood. All the hotels here are like kind of cheap. You got Sensoji next door, you got this delicious thing. And we took a boat here. And we took a boat here. I mean, I don't know, it's got everything, it's got everything. It's even got this guy, look at his cute little vest, he looks so smug! Feels like always there's just hundreds and thousands of people 
And even though it's really crowded, I feel like though that's part of what makes this area so special. It like always puts me in a good mood to see so many people enjoying Sensoji and Asakusa. It's probably one of our favorite reasons to be here. A place that I've never thought to go to every time that we've stayed here, but we've been told that we should visit is the actual cultural information center here. It's supposed to have a really pretty view. Listen, I know what you're thinking. We keep going up in tall things and seeing cool views from the top, but I mean, just look at the view you get of this temple and the gate from here. It's awesome. But don't worry, we're only going to do something like this two more times for the whole rest of the video. It's definitely not the tallest building in all of Tokyo, but it's a really cool view. Like this bird's eye view of the entire shopping street that goes up to Sensoji. So cool. This is great and probably has a lot of information for tourists like us. That's enough pretty views. Let's go find a cool restaurant. So this is Somitaro, which is a cook-it-yourself okonomiyaki place. So you get this huge flat-top grill in front of you, and then you can order from all sorts of different yaki soba and okonomiyaki, and it is delicious. Uh, not because of how good we are at cooking this, because we have no idea what we're doing, but because of how fresh and delicious the ingredients are. It's pretty dang budget-friendly, if I do say so myself. So, what did we get? It's a big decision. The instructions. the instructions to cook okonomiyaki are as follows. 1. Mix the okonomiyaki well. 2. Spread the oil on the hot plate. 3. Spread the okonomiyaki on the hot plate in a circle and grill for 5 minutes. And now we wait. It's like a pancake. <laughs> 4. Flip it over and grill the other side for 5 minutes. Okay, 3, 2, go. Nice. Yes. 5. Brush on the sauce, drizzle the mayo, and sprinkle on the seaweed. Six, use the spatula to cut into smaller portions. And most importantly, seven, enjoy. They're right, more sauce, more better. <laughs> the pancake mix is awesome. We basically followed the exact same process for yakisoba and bam, here it is. Oh, look at that steam coming up. Yes. So fresh, all the ingredients are so perfectly seasoned. Man, it's such a fun experience. Just <laughs> like cooking it for yourself. I don't know, there's something, something nice about that, something that I enjoy. Most, of, almost all the hard work's done for you. You just gotta flip a pancake and poke around some noodles, but still you kind of feel a little oh. pinch of accomplishment. We didn't get a certificate of assembling okonomiyaki here, but we did get a tasty meal and that was good enough for us. Okay, so after Somitaro, we are now on the hunt for a little bit of dessert. Do we need dessert? No. Do we want dessert? Absolutely. <laughs> 10 minutes south of Asakusa is supposedly the best chocolate maker anywhere in Tokyo. It's called Dandelion Chocolate, which I know it's a big, it's a big statement. Some people have even said it's the best chocolate anywhere in Japan. <sighs> it's only one way to find out. It's tough work, but somebody's got to do it. So good. As soon as you walk in, you smell dark chocolate, like rich dark chocolate, and it's so nice in here. It smells so nice in here. So we got the s'mores and a big chocolate chip cookie with chunks. These are hefty. like chocolate, even if you don't like chocolate, I'm convinced that they will convince you that you will like chocolate. I don't think. Yeah, it's 
pretty, pretty hard. I'm a bit of a cookie snob. Definitely a competitive cookie baker amongst me and my family. I'm skeptical going into this. It's a little hard. Chocolate is good. Chocolate is delicious. Cookie is okay. It's still a really fun experience, all of this. That marshmallow thing. I think if you come here, that's the thing to get for sure. <laughs> Okay, so sun's getting real low, so that means we gotta find a spot to watch the sunset. So that thing right there is the Asahi corporate headquarters. It's apparently a big flame on top, but you tell me what, what you think that looks like. You can go up into the corporate headquarters and apparently they have a great place to get a beer with a view of the entire city and maybe we'll be able to catch the sunset. But we gotta get going. A short wait later, we made it just in time for sunset. Incredible. The sun setting. You can even see Mount Fuji from here. You kind of have to like wiggle your way around if you want to get a good view. I'm so glad we made it and that we get to see Mount Fuji twice. Asakusa really empties out in the evening, which is exactly why we love staying here. I just love this area. I know we show it all the time in our Tokyo videos, but it's truly because it's one of our favorite places. It's just so peaceful and the river is incredible. Bridges everywhere, all lit up. So happy, day one. There's just something about Sensoji at night. So magical, so beautiful, and it's like late, but there's still a lot of people around shaking for fortune and taking pictures and so beautiful. So peaceful and beautiful. Back at the hotel. There this it is. is it. This is what 61 bucks will get you. All ready for our cento. The best part of the day, by <laughs> far. The best part of the day. I think having a hotel with a cento with a public bath built into it yeah. is the single greatest perk I've ever had at a hotel. Especially after today's long yep. Tokyo Tower climb. You know it's on sand time. It's on sand time. Yeah. It's all sand time. Did you get the key?
place. Okay, day two, so we're all dressed up in our yukata, ready to go hit up the sento at the top of our building, uh, which I think is a perfect way to start out any day here. I realized though this morning that there are basically three different things that everybody says that you gotta do while you're in Tokyo. One is the Shibuya scramble, that like crazy street where people are thousands of people every minute going across there. Number two, Sisen Soji, the temple that we ended at last night. And then number three, which always confused me a little bit, but I, I guess I get the draw because there's nowhere else you can see it, is to wake up at four in the morning and go to a fish market and watch people buy tuna. I mean, the tuna's really big. There's some interesting parts to it, but like objectively, it's just like people kind of buying fish super early in the morning. But a couple of years ago, they actually took this like third most popular thing in all of Tokyo and they just like uprooted it and moved it over to Toyosu Market in a totally new place. And from the reports, they're kind of mixed. Is the new Toyosu market still cool and like budget friendly? And, or did they just like turn this really cool ancient fish market into just a giant mall? And I think that that's what we're gonna go and find out today. I've realized that we've never actually been to Toyosu. We've never been to this new fish market. So that's the thing we're doing this morning. We're gonna find out if it's cool or not. First, Sento. Coming back. In to turn off the camera, turn off the camera, turn off the camera. Getting to the new Toyosu Market is quite an adventure. It takes well over an hour from Asakusa, which is just six miles away. It's a train, a transfer, another train, a transfer, a monorail, then a bit of a walk, and then you're finally there. Toyosu. Toyosu. This might not seem like a big deal, but we'll show you why it is in a little bit. Market open day. Yeah, it's a lot busier than I thought it was going to be. Exciting. First stop, this kind of Edo-style shopping complex right across the street from the new fish market. Ooh, omakase, knives, matcha ice cream, grilled meats, campfire fish. Ooh, yeah, egg omelet guy, we know them. walk and eat here, which I appreciate. So we're pulled over here, right next to the store. It's fresh. And hot. How do you eat this? Can you like tell jam. I hate eating on camera? It's just like jamming in there. Everyone's watching. Oh, sweeter than I was imagining. That is good though. It's so fluffy. This was what, 300 yen? This is definitely reminiscent of the Tsukiji Tamago egg stick on egg on a stick. This one's definitely fancier and very good. It's like a dessert almost. Mm. Okay. Is that a tuna? This is amazing and tasty looking. I'm not mad about this place. It's brand new, it's modern, it's cool, it's kind of kitschy and fun. They've got all kinds of tourist stuff, but obviously we're tourists here, so this place is super cool to me. I mean, it's very different than Tsukiji, right? Like, Tsukiji has the history and the... I mean, it was where the fish market originated, so it makes sense it has a different old-time feel, but this place is awesome. I mean, there's like sake tasting that you can get a sake cup out of a little capsule toy and then do five tastings for 2,000 yen. A little bit pricey, but still fun. I kind of love it. We walked inside and it was jam-packed like a bunch of sardines. <laughs> get it? Sardines? It's so busy in here. I was not expecting this. Well, this place was super fun and cool. Prices were like three to five dollars more on average than most other places in Tokyo, but there's gotta be some budget eats here, right? Hold up, are those golden eggs? 500 yen for raw egg on rice? We had no idea what journey we were about to embark on, and as he stuck a big package of rice in a microwave, I got a bit skeptical. What am I doing with my life right He motioned for us to crack the egg into the rice. I feel like I'm demonstrating. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and then mix that egg into that rice. <laughs> this is fun. And then he took us on a magical food journey with all of his spices and sauces. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
Mushy. Mmm. <laughs> That's really good. It's like got a soupy consistency and it's savory. I've never had raw egg with rice. This is so good. <laughs> Try some. Yeah. It's much tastier than I expected it to be for just how simple it is. <laughs> it's very good. What's this to me? Yes. Mm. It's okay. They keep coming back and adding more stuff to it every time I take a bite to make it more exciting. And that's great. That one's almond soy sauce. Mm. Very different. Yeah. Okay. So now we gotta try this. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Soy sauce is hot. Soy sauce is hot. Okay. And then we mix. You're gonna want to try this. The almond, okay. the almond thing was really good. I'm having so much fun. We came to a fish market and had to have eggs. <laughs> what? That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Right, doesn't that change it? What is that? <laughs> it's like salty and savory, like MSG, but barbecue-like. Guys, I don't know what's happening here, but we just finished a whole bowl of rice and one raw egg and all different kinds of spices and sauces, and I'm so happy. We definitely severely underestimated how tasty this simple combo could be, and he even sent us with a little rice to go. Rice to go. <laughs> you know, when I read all the things online about this place, I was more than a little bit worried that there weren't going to be like any budget-friendly options here at all, but there were actually a lot more than I thought. Egg thing was only 300 egg on rice 500 and then there were tons of other like full meals for like, you know, the standard prices, like 800 to 1,000 yen. There's also a loss in here. We should probably go. We should probably go. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, and Lawson's Karage Red is the single greatest chicken convenience store product in all of Japan. Hmm. We are at a fish market. We should probably get some fish, huh? We are on the hunt for fresh fish. One of my favorite experiences from Tsukiji was last time when we got some like sashimi for like, I don't know, 800 yen I think it was. We haven't found anything like that here. There are some restaurants that sell donburis or rice bowls with sashimi for like 3,000 yen. A little bit out of our budget. So we're on the hunt. Now across the road to the main fish market, there's an entire restaurant area with tasty looking seafood, but it's still a bit out of our budget. Some sake, some knives, this giant tuna statue, and an even bigger tuna statue. The biggest one that they've ever caught here. The biggest one. I mean, look. What? That would make for really, really good poke. No street sushi to be found here. The hunt continues. Time for the main event. Oh, so this is what a fish auction looks like. Wow, it's so early and so exciting. There's so many fish for sale, there's so much action. This is as close as we're gonna get. The instructional video is great though. Okay, so we're at the tuna auction observation deck and this is open to the public. So every single morning from like 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. they run a tuna auction. You can just come here, watch, you don't have to pay anything or reserve anything or win a lottery or whatever, but Mostly, I think from up here, what you'd see is kind of just like the tops of people's heads and the small tuna very, very far away. Since it's so early and it starts at 5.30 and you gotta be here by 5.15, there is no public transportation running at all out here. So the only way to get out here in time for the start of the auction is actually to take a taxi, which means you're probably spending like 40 to $60 just to get out here early enough in the morning. With all that being said, I mean, it's cool that they opened it up that anyone can come and see it. You can actually just come out and see it if you want, even if it's from far away. But when the tuna auction's not happening, there's not a lot to see in this side. It seems like there's a couple of small stores, but it's mostly just like empty styrofoam boxes and a big empty room. We didn't find anything that you can really buy seafood wise. And they just looked online and apparently they just don't do that here at Toyosu. So... Back to Tsukiji. There's street food everywhere, there's affordable prices, there's stuff on fire, there's buckets of crab legs and sashimi from a man in an alleyway. It's good to be back. Yep. Yeah. 
That's what I'm talking about. Chew to fresh as can be. <laughs> and this is just more, way more fun. And I read that the fish apparently comes directly from Toyosu anyway, so. Sashimi mission accomplished. We wandered around our old stomping grounds, past some old school covered markets, and through tiny alleyways until we found a vending machine bar. This looks awesome. It's scientifically best poured beer. Wow. Science. So many fun vending machine choices, sochu whiskey, but Lisa opted for the Japanese cocktail of choice, a highball. drinks were good, the snacks were great, the company was awesome, this was perfect. If you do want to come here... By the way, this place is called 38 Kiosk, and if you're interested in getting like a Google map that shows every single place that we went to, as well as the full city guide for this entire three more days in Tokyo video that we're making, you can get that on our Patreon, and then also there's like tons of other stuff on there. So there's like director's commentaries and bloopers, and then our entire credit card churning course and a bunch of other stuff on there. And not only that, but 10% of all the money that we make from Patreon goes directly into our scholarship for study abroad students, and we match that amount every single month. So, check that out. Okay, that was awesome. That guy also gave us a lead on a super cool boat that we can take to where we wanted to head next to Odaiba. So, we're gonna walk around the corner, go to, I think, let's call Watchers Takeshiba, and grab the ferry down to Odaiba from there, I think. It was so nice. <laughs> it was just the coolest experience. I could have very easily just stayed there all day and all night and just hung out with them and talked about their fishing adventures in Hawaii, which is... <laughs> it, was just, it was just great. It was great. It was great. All right, let's go. I'm really excited. I think we're just going to catch this. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. When, when a local tells you to do something, you do it. Yes. So we are, we are doing. Who are we to question a good thing? Yeah. We realized pretty quickly that it was quite a bit further than we thought, and we only had <laughs> just six minutes to catch this thing. We're so close. I got to do a Right. She was just closing up as we were getting in. Another really cool boat, and this time the top deck is open. such a cool way to see the city. We're so used to taking the trains and the trams and those are awesome, but this is, this is pretty cool. Hey, we know them. Hi, spaceship boat. <laughs> I've taken the Mario Kart things up and over the rainbow bridge here and that was really cool. This is a whole other thing. Cut. <laughs> I said cut! 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 <laughs> that, that boat was awesome. Definitely the inside is cool, but I think the top, the top deck is really cool just to get to see the Tokyo skyline. We just took it one stop and it was about 700 yen per ticket. There's a Statue of Liberty. Cool. Also cool. Sweet golden pointy thing. That's a pretty cool building. Honestly, Odaiba is not really our vibe. It's basically a bunch of huge shopping malls, but we did find this. That is awesome.
this place is certainly interesting and fascinating. There's a lot of cool buildings, big pieces of architecture toys. Not really for us, but we did hear a friend tell us that there are a couple of really cool festivals happening right now here in Tokyo, and it turns out like almost every month, every week, there's some cool festival happening. This weekend, it's the Samurai Festival and the Plum Blossom Festival, not to be confused with Cherry Blossom Festival. So off we went in search of festivals. First stop, Plum Blossoms. around February to March, they have this festival for the plum blossom. So all these beautiful trees that are blossoming are actually not cherry blossoms. They're plum blossoms. Don't know where the festival, if it's still happening because of the rain, but let's find out. Okay, the festival here was rained out, but surely samurai don't let a little water stop them. Okay, so we're at Oena Park right now, and even though it is freezing cold, and I think maybe gonna snow today, which is kind of exciting, it is very beautiful out here. Oh, I smell some stick meat, and I see some fire, and I hear some screaming. We might be in the right place. Samurai Festival up ahead. Fun. Cool. This festival is hype. Food everywhere, craft beer and sake, steamy stuff. This guy cutting this thing with a big katana. Dumplings, very friendly people. <laughs> Let's get some of that. Okay, so it looks like we've got a mixture of like chicken, leg, meat, tripe, long, maybe stomach, all the good stuff. I love it. It's like a little bit sweet, very savory. Chewy, tasty. To be honest, I have no idea what I'm eating with what parts, but who cares, it's good. And then, you know, why not some hot sake to warm up? We've never gone to any festivals in Tokyo, and after this, I don't really know why. This is awesome. What's going on in there? I told you this festival was hype. That was super fun. The Samurai Fest was great, actually. I had a really good time. The food was tasty, sake was hot, all the performers were really cool. Okay, now we are heading off to the Seafood Festival, I think is what it's called. It's in Yoyogi Park, kind of near Shibuya, so off we go. Oh, it's busy. Is this all for the seafood festival, you think? No way, right? 
right? We made it out of the train station and were immediately shepherded into this confusingly long line. Rain does not stop people from doing stuff out here. I admire that. Don't lose me. <laughs> what? I'm confused. What is this for? Like, okay, so there's at least 10,000 people here right now, like at least all trying to take one single pedestrian bridge, I think, to get to the seafood festival. All I see is just umbrellas everywhere and tons of people. <laughs> I can't see anything. I think I haven't seen another another dude here. Oh no, we're okay. stuck now. What is all this? Hey, we made it to the bridge. I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> right now. I don't know what we're in line for anymore. About half an hour later, we made it through to find this. Uh, in Interstellatic? I think it's like a, it looks like a J-pop is what this looks like. Tickets are unfortunately sold out, which I guess makes sense because there's like tens of thousands of people here. Should we buy their CD? 4,400 for the CD and Blu-ray. <laughs> this is the uh, status of it. Don't get us wrong, we love a good boy band concert. This is much more our scene though. Turns out there was also a free concert here. There's so many good options here, we couldn't decide where to start. Squid on a stick, boiling seafood stews. Ooh, what's that? We gotta try that. <laughs> okay, what'd you get? I don't know, I just saw people with fishes on a stick and it looked really good. I don't know what to do about the fins. Do it I looks like you eat everything except for the head, is what that bucket of fish heads is telling me. That's really tasty. I don't even know what kind of fish this is. Mackerel? Which is my favorite. <laughs> That's really good. This is not something in a form factor I ever thought I would eat. <laughs> I like the idea though. <laughs> Yeah, it's delicious and incredibly salty and really good. Heck yeah. And you will love it for the rest of your life. That is maybe the greatest sign I've ever seen. I'm getting french fries at a seafood festival. <laughs> yes, I know I'm a living meme at this point. I got french fries. The marketing was just too good. These are some long french fries. <laughs> How do they, is it just a real, one really big potato? That's really good. Does it taste chewy like mochi? A little bit. It's a little bit chewy and it's like mochi battered a little bit. And it's got some kind of salt on it. I cannot identify, but it is really good. Mm. Okay, so right, there's a lot of overlap between this festival and the Samurai Festival, right? Like it's a bunch of tents, a bunch of really tasty food. So much fun stuff happening in all corners of Tokyo basically every single weekend. Plus, I've never had these like crazy long french fries. I've had french fries in almost every possible form factor. I've never seen it like this. <laughs> it's like a Tokyo specific thing that both of these festivals it makes me really happy that it was happening while we were here. And I think that before you come, you should definitely check Tokyo Cheapo or any of the other websites. Find out if there's any of these festivals like this because this, this is a plan. Something's happening. I think we do get to see some J-pop. Pretty fun!
all festivaled out, we hopped on the nearest bus to take us to the bright lights and skyscrapers of Shinjuku for the night. It's such a cool area. I think we're right here. It's such like the perfect time to be in Shinjuku. It's a totally different city between day and night. And we're like right here at the time to be able to see both. So we're on our way to an arcade to donate our mandatory like thousand yen per trip to claw games that we have to do. Okay, this has to be the time. This has to be it. We've never won anything out of these in Tokyo and we've blown so much money trying. This is the one. <laughs> that was so sad. It didn't even grab. It didn't do anything. Lucky french fries? I guess not. Sorry. Ooh, this is interesting and also slightly embarrassing. I'm gonna be sad if I don't. I think you just like, like cram it down. Oh, oh. no. So close. I think one Easy more. Easy mode. I think one more. And you no, go. I don't want it. Come on. I feel like they're just messing with me. <gasps> oh. <sighs> oh no, I went too far back. <laughs> <sighs> I guess it's time to move on to games that we can win. Keyboard, got excited. Let's try this. All those years of piano lessons coming to good use okay. here. <laughs> New record. All right, I'm up. How am I going to follow that? What a workout. I'm exhausted. We won something. We finally won something. Delicious chocolates that we did not at all just go over to Don Quixote and buy for 100 yen. That's not what we did. It's so pretty at night here. And the rain makes it extra shiny and light up. We just made it to this place called Yakiniku Vike, which is basically like your own little Yakiniku area. It's really cool. It's meant for like soul diners, but we get to sit next to each other and get their own little this called grill. And order from the iPad. It's supposed to be really tasty and affordable. Okay, let's figure out how this place works. So it looks like you order stuff in sets, and it looks like generally things are like five dollars. God, what a good deal. So you can choose the size of your rice, whether or not you want a salad. Let's grab some water right out of the tap at your table. Quick, light up the grill and try not to set your entire head on fire. And bam, food's already here. Wow. That's so cool. Okay. I love that So here we go. A little too hot. This is exactly what the sign is warning us about. Let's turn it down. I wanted to try a piece without the sauces. So good on its own. It's like already marinated. It's so savory and smoky. I love this place. I feel like we're gonna come here all the time now. I think my favorite part about this experience is obviously the food's really good, but I remember when I first came to Japan as a solo traveler, I was worried about eating by myself. It just felt uncomfortable. But Japan has figured this out. Like, you can come here, grill your own meat affordably and not feel like you have to feel fear for being alone. 
Oh man, that was great. On to the next. That's so cool. Dinner over, it's time for another Japanese institution. Batting cages. Better up. <laughs> Swing. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, we definitely hit 100% of these pitches, for sure. This is just another friendly reminder to not trust everything you see on YouTube. Okay, so you know how in every single guidebook, blog, and travel video known to man, at some point, they tell you to go somewhere just to soak in the ambiance. And to be honest, I never really knew what that meant. I just thought it was some lazy writing because they couldn't find anything interesting to do there. But right here, Shinjuku at night, especially in the rain, was the first place I really understood what that actually meant. And I don't think there's any better place in the world to do exactly that than right here. Okay, it's time to go up into this video game, Final Boss's Secret Lair, to see our fourth and final beautiful view from way, way up high. So we made it to the top of the Tokyo Metropolitan Building, and it has this incredible observatory on the top, completely free, open to the public. It's open to like, I think 10 p.m. It's like rainy and foggy today, but it's got this like misty feeling over Tokyo, which I feel like we rarely see. And because the building's illuminated, it just looks extra cool and wintry and sparkly. And now back to Asakusa for our nightly ritual. Kanage <laughs> cheese snow. Okay, the ambiance is pretty great here too. You got your key? Yeah. You know what time it is. extra footage that we're not going to use. Hot coffee. Hot coffee. Uh, thank you.
In case you're wondering why we're in such good moods today, well, it's sunny, and we're heading to the biggest flea market in Tokyo. And then after that, onto the second largest city in all of Japan. Just a quick breakfast stop before the flea market. You know how much we love a good conveyor belt sushi restaurant. So close. Oh, I love Kaiten sushi. Okay, this is a really good, really good deal. Free tuna pieces for 170. Is this three tuna? Yeah. How much was it? 170? All right, so this is a conveyor belt sushi restaurant called Hama Sushi, which is right across the road from the flea market. We're just stopping here for some quick breakfast. Oh, that was so good. We ate so, so much sushi, and somehow we didn't even spend $20. And now it's time for my favorite part of the trip. We are going to the flea market because why buy brand new souvenirs when you can buy stuff from a foreign country and give it a second life or a third life or a fourth life. I'm so excited. This place is massive and I mean mind-bogglingly so. There's hundreds of vendors both in the open parking lot and under this metal one selling literally anything you can think of. Hand-painted bowling shoes? Got them. Leather motorcycle jackets? You bet. Ties for 60 cents, handbags, this thing, dog statues, model cars, so, so, so much clothing for so cheap. Stacks of PlayStations and other retro gaming stuff, oh my god, nope. Signs, and so much more. I could stay here hours. There's like tons and tons of clothes. My favorite stuff is looking through all the clothes and all the small little things. Oh, I think Lisa found some. I'm um, looking to replace this 3M wallet. How can you not get this one? The back's cool. Did you see the back? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> okay, did you buy one? Found two. They're 100 yen each, so you know. Because it's Japan, everything here is in impeccable shape. I picked up this sweet NASA patch for my hoodie and Lisa got a new t-shirt to go with her wallet. It's okay. It's a beach park. That's cool. Let's get in there. Whoa. We could have easily spent all day here. Oh, and I gotta get this Pokemon card before we leave. Of course, Alakazam is just so strong. We'd better get going before Lisa takes home all this sweet free stuff. I could stay here forever, honestly. I'm really sad. I don't want to go, but we're heading to Yokohama. It's only a $4 train ride. Let's go. This goes in here. This goes in here. Yokohama is happening today. There's so many people here. First impressions, Yokohama has got a lot going for it. I'm really excited about this place. The gigantic Ferris wheel kind of like taking over this main park here, all these cool pedestrian areas. And there's also this really relaxed vibe here that I think we obviously haven't felt since we got to Tokyo, because I would describe Tokyo as a lot of things, but like chill and laid back is certainly not one of those things. But this kind of kind of has a bit of that feeling while still having tons of stuff to do. And like right when you walk out of the train station, there's this gondola that takes you directly to the main park area, which is where we're heading right now. We didn't do it because it was kind of expensive, but it looked like a really good way to go. Then we just saw a ton of people in the distance, so we went to go investigate. It's a strawberry. <laughs> A strawberry festival, 500 yen just to get in, a two hour wait. Uh, 
Yeah. No. Strawberry. Hot cakes and strawberries? Yeah. Strawberry crepe. Honestly, Bambini, they were ready for this. <laughs> they really were. Hold on. Let's, let, let's show these things off. Let's show how squishy that is. Come on. Cheers to the strawberry festival. Strawberry Festival, baby, 2024. I think I just realized something here. Is that at any point in time, we could just have our own strawberry festival. It's something to think about. Okay, so strawberry festival check. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna head over to Chinatown, uh, where I think there's gonna be some lion dances celebrating the end of Chinese New Year that's happening right now. Plus the Chinatown is supposed to be spectacular here. Whoa, hold up, that's way too on the nose. Okay, that's much better. It felt like everyone was here in Chinatown getting street food right now. It was just one unending mass of people going past infinite dumpling shops, fried chicken places, and awesome looking restaurants. Taiwanese fried chicken. Super crispy, really good. Not like Sichuan pepper spicy, but still tasty. I wish it was a little bit spicier. Oh yeah, and the pork pie? Eh. Yeah, it's good. It's okay. It's kind of plain. Hukalama Chinatown seems to be the place to be. There's like fortune telling shops every couple of blocks that are really fun and then there's dumpling street food everywhere that you go and this seems to be like the only place in Japan where it's totally okay to just grab your food and walk with it and eat it as you're walking. Just wandering around looking for some more street food at this point. And there's some stuff there that you can put on. Eat the taki mask. Mm. You know how part of the experience of eating soup dumplings is that the soup burns you a little? I'm kind of missing that. It feels like it's all just congealed. It's really tasty, but I'm missing the little bit of fear that comes with eating soup dumplings and the ginger. I've seen everybody with these like green and white fried dumplings, so clearly that's like the thing to get on the street today. We're gonna give it a try. I think that's vinegar, soy sauce. This, this one. Do it all. This one looks sinister. <laughs> Dish one. You gotta put a little vinegar on it, I think. Yes, for sure. Okay. Huge. Oh, wow. This smells so good. Oh, they're soup dumplings. Did that burn? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your wish has been granted. Mm. <laughs> but you weren't Ooh. expecting it. That is good. Yes, I could eat like a hundred of these. I shouldn't, but I could. Is it hot? Mm -hmm. I think I wish I got that in slow-mo. <laughs> so I did. Oh, they're soup dumplings. This place is so cool and so beautiful. I know, I know you're probably like, really, Chinatown in Japan, but honestly, people told us to come here and this is incredible. Food's really good, the ambiance is really cool. It's really pretty. I'm a fan. I can't find a trash can. We 
made our way to the main temple where people were congregating and shows were happening, and also for some reason they were giving out some Pikachu hats. Does it fit good? We wandered around for a while until we found this really cool spot. So we were just walking around in Chinatown. We made it all the way around the city and then came back here. And we happened across this place that I think is called the Standing Bar is where we're at. And obviously I think the uh, characteristic of that is pretty straightforward. It's standing, it's a much more relaxed atmosphere in here than I think a lot of the other bars around that we've gone to before. It just feels like we're kind of like chilling in somebody's house who happens to have really good drinks and really good food and uh, really loves taking care of us. It's a very comfortable place to be. That place was so, so cool. It was like really tiny and there was like four of us in there. The woman that runs the bar there is really sweet. Josh asked where was the best place to go watch the fireworks by just going. And she's like, oh, and then she pointed on the map. She told us the pier, all the way at the end of the pier is the best place. So that's where we're going. Why are we always running? You know, seriously, why are we always running? <laughs> we made it just in time for the end of the video. This is really embarrassing, but before we got here, we were kind of scratching our heads about what we were going to do. Like, how are we going to fill three more days here? And we've been lucky enough to come to Tokyo a few times now, and it kind of felt like we had seen and done it all. But then the moment we landed and we saw this, and this, and this, and especially this, we realized how absolutely foolish we were, and that we had seen basically none of it. And I think that's true of everywhere that we go as tourists. It can feel like once you've seen all the top 10 things on TripAdvisor that you've done a place, and that one time is enough. But every single time we go back somewhere for the second, third, 12th time, it doesn't matter, there's always more to find if we can approach it with the right mindset and open ourselves up to let the place and people guide us instead of sticking to some pre-Googled or even worse, AI-generated itinerary. If we can do that, a whole new world always opens up. Travel is just too personal of an affair to let someone else make all the choices for you. Yes, that definitely includes us and this video. So take the stuff in here you enjoyed and go and do it. Throw out the stuff you didn't and then fill the rest in with things that you love. Yokohama turned out to be such a cool city. So many, so many cool things laid back, but like on the water, beautiful and eccentric and lively. I could totally see myself staying three days here in Yokohama. <laughs> There's fire. I believe there's something here for everyone. A unique experience, an unbelievable restaurant, a beautiful view, a subtle, kind interaction with a local. And you're definitely not going to find that in a guidebook, a YouTube video, a podcast, or some blog. It's personal. You've got to discover it for yourself. There's just no other way. So just make sure that you don't leave without taking some time to find it. You're still here. Thanks for sticking around. We just wanted to tell you about one last secret. So we're in the JP Mori Tower and on the 33rd floor. It's completely free and it has an incredible, almost 360 view of the entirety of Tokyo, including the Tokyo Tower. You'll see. 
Okay, there were actually five in here. I'm sorry. I just didn't want to ruin the surprise. Cut. <laughs> cut. I said cut. <laughs>